Thank you very much, Emma. And uh, a warm welcome to you all. It's wonderful to see you all here. And just to say, I'm Caroline Hoffman. I'm Clinical and Research Director for the charity Breast Cancer Haven. And I'm also a teacher of mindfulness-based stress reduction and mindful self-compassion. So we're going to take a moment just to kind of find ourselves tonight um, in, in this practice of mindfulness, which is really bringing an embodied presence and awareness to each moment. So I'd like us all to start by just taking a moment. You can take your glasses off if you've got glasses on and just close your eyes if you're comfortable with that or lowering your gaze. And just to find your own body in this space that you're in now, just find yourself with your sitting on your chair, wherever you are, allow your eyes to go, eyes to close and just settling in just starting to notice what it's like to be just sitting here, maybe taking a moment to feel your feet touching the floor, maybe the soles of the feet touching the floor. Maybe we're feeling the our socks or our slippers or whatever we're wearing. Just feeling that connection under the feet, wherever they are. And let's, maybe if we're sitting, feeling that support under the back of our legs, under our bottom. And feeling that connection. If we're sitting back, if we're leaning back, feeling that connection behind the back as well. So let's just, if it feels safe and it feels right for you, just gently opening your awareness to that experience of sitting here as you are feeling through our physical senses what it's like just to be sitting here. And maybe as you notice through sensations, you might also notice that you're breathing, something we don't often pay much attention to, unless we're act active or running or something or have difficulty breathing. So let's just notice the fact that there breathing happening and feel the sensations of that just as it is in the body. So while we're doing this, just a reminder that there's no particular way to feel. We're not trying to get anywhere. We're just allowing ourselves to start to notice what's here. This is mindfulness, bringing this kind and gentle attention to our own experience moment to moment. Maybe feeling the breath moving in the body as we sit here. Just allow yourself to tune into that. Being curious. Maybe also noticing how the mind has this natural tendency to wander. I'm sure all our minds have wandered several times since we've been sitting here, but that's what our minds do. That's just minds. So not worrying about that. We just bring our gentle, kind attention back to this moment and start to notice how we are. And if it feels at all overwhelming, then just bringing our attention back to that connection we have with the support under the body, maybe the feet on the floor, the body on the chair, just coming back to that connection, that sense of anchoring, that sense of grounding. So mindfulness is what we call an embodied present moment awareness, which allows us to settle a little bit, to find ourselves in each moment. So this is what we're doing right now. And we can start to notice what's here. We can start to notice not only 
the physical sensations that might be present in the body. But we can also notice maybe thoughts passing through or emotions being present. So this is all part of mindful awareness, aware of physical sensations, aware of thoughts and aware of our emotions and where we feel those in the body. Coming back to the sensations in the body, coming back to the sensations of the breath moving in the body. Nice and easy. The mind's like a, a little puppy and we have a new puppy and we let it go in the park and it runs all over the place. This is what the mind's like. So we gently bring the puppy back. We bring the mind back to the breathing. every time it runs off. Well, we can also be aware of sounds coming to the ears and if our eyes, when we have our eyes open, we can notice what's coming to the eyes, but we'll just leave our eyes gently closed for now. So we use all our senses in mindfulness practice. So now we're going to add in this element of self-compassion, this kindness. So self-compassion is bringing kindness to our own experience. Just as we'd be kind to if we had a friend who was going through whatever we're experiencing maybe now or what we've been experiencing today and we have any difficulty, if we had a friend going through this, we'd naturally want to be kind, to reach out, to support them. This is, this is what we do as humans. But when we struggle with ourselves inside, when we have difficulty, where most of us are not very good at being kind to ourselves, we tend to be quite critical and harden ourselves. So we've asked the question, what's here now? That's the mindful question. What am I experiencing now? What's here now? The question we're coming to next is this question, what do I need right now? What am I experiencing in my own experience right now that could do with a little bit of support, just like in the way we'd support a good friend? So maybe just an opportunity to notice what you're feeling in the body. Maybe you're feeling a bit anxious or maybe it's a bit of stress or you're worried about something. So without pushing this away, can we just, ah, oh, you know, maybe acknowledge it's hard, hard to feel like this, hard to experience this. This is self-compassion, this acknowledgement of how things are. And then the next step is, you know, can I just be a little bit kind to myself? So maybe you'd like to join me by this experimenting by just taking a hand or two hands and maybe placing them somewhere on your body which would support you. It might be, might be over your chest, over your heart, if that's where you're feeling emotion if you are. Or it might be over your tummy or you might like to give yourself a little hug. Just placing your hand somewhere on the body and allowing yourself to feel that contact between the touch of your own hands giving and your own body receiving. Just noticing what that feels like. And maybe it, maybe it reminds us of maybe the touch of a loved one in the times when we're not in COVID and we could hug and touch our friends and family. But maybe, maybe there's something around this fact that we can give this support to ourselves. This is quite revolutionary. This is new to most of us too, even though this is possible. So just trying this out. 
And we call this soothing touch. And we can accompany it by just saying to ourselves, you know, this is hard, but you know, I'm going to just be kind to myself because these difficult emotions are here or because this stress is here, whatever it is, because this pain in the body is here. Let me be kind to myself just the way it is right now. So we're not excluding ourselves. We're not excluding anything from our present moment experience. Our, this opportunity just to be with ourselves as we are, however it is. It might seem a bit strange, it might be different, but and maybe it feels a bit challenging. Maybe we don't want to be with difficulty. That's quite normal too. So we're just starting to open to the possibility of giving ourselves this soothing touch, giving ourselves some kind words when we struggle rather than criticizing ourselves, which so we're so quick to do a lot of the time. So breathing in, breathing out, just maybe taking a moment to receive this touch, these kind words. And if you're not sure what to say to yourself, what you now if you had, if you were in a position, there's something going on, and you had a friend who was in the same situation, what might you say to your friend? What kind words would you say to your friend going through what you're going through? And then when you've found maybe a word or a few words, can you, what's it like to try saying those words to yourself? You're just as worthy of kindness as anyone else, any other being on the planet. So now I'd like to invite you just to release the practice, just maybe letting your hands rest in your lap and just to sit quietly for a moment in your own experience as you are right now, releasing the practice and just being here as you are, noticing what's here for you now, allowing, allowing that to be just as it is. And allowing yourself to be just as you are. And then, when you're ready, just gently starting to maybe take some few deeper breaths, have a little stretch, open your eyes, coming back, whatever you need to do, maybe have a sip of your drink or whatever you need. So that was just a little touch into mindfulness and self-compassion practice. So I'm now going to pass over to Eve. myself hello good evening everyone how lovely to see you all here i'm eve warren and um i'm the life work coach at breast cancer haven and i also run some classes and workshops um including one in our exploring series on journaling and we're just going to talk a little bit about journaling sometimes known as reflective writing and then I'm going to invite you to participate in a short uh, private journaling activity. So I hope you've all got some paper and uh, a pen or a pencil to, to do that. Um, so journaling is um, a form of writing that is entirely for ourselves. It's, it's not for anyone else. It's, um, it's just entirely personal. And you might have heard or read quite a lot about journaling. Um, there's sometimes guidance about how to do it and the particular ways you should do it. But the important thing is 
that you create a way that works right for you, that's best for you. But what we do know is that it is beneficial and it's beneficial on at least three levels. One, one in terms of our feelings, because we are connecting with our feelings. It's beneficial because we're exploring our thoughts. But interestingly, and no one seems to know quite why it helps, but it does have proven benefits to our well-being and leading to a more relaxed state. Um, a state of physical relaxation, as well as enhancing our well-being. And it is a kind of amazing thing that you can have all these benefits from spending time writing for yourself. So the guidance really is that you use handwriting rather than typing. And I think personally, it's lovely if you can choose a beautiful book. Um, it doesn't matter what size, it could be this size, or it could be this size, or it could be this size. You're going to get the sense from this that I do quite a bit of journaling. I have different books I've used at different times. I think sometimes when you're starting off, it can be quite nice to start with quite a small book because then you're not feeling under pressure to uh, write a lot. Um, but what we do know from the research is that the well-being benefits increase the more you do it. You don't though have to journal every day and you don't have to journal for any particular length of time and I think certainly when you start off it's really great to set yourself a time but to say maybe I'm going to journal for 10 minutes. Set yourself a time and that's what you do. Sometimes people of course like to take a small notebook out with them on a walk and sit somewhere nice now that the weather's nice and right there. Uh, you could choose different places in the house, but I think the most important thing is to practice different ways and experiment until you find um, a kind of place and a time that works for you. So what are we doing in journaling? We're basically a bit like we were exploring in mindfulness. We're basically connecting with ourselves. We're asking ourselves, how am I now? What's going on for me now? And we might start, and I always think this is a great place to start, you know, what is it like for me now? What's happening? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Or what's been going on for me? Or what's in my thoughts? Or what am I concerned about? Or what am I pleased about? And we just write. We're not trying to write in any particular way. It hasn't got to be sentences, although it usually tends to be in prose. It's not about a beautiful style, it's connecting with you, it's your thoughts coming out. Most importantly, not that we don't judge what we're writing. And certainly, and I know I'm a regular journal, a journaler, and I do sometimes write things, like, oh, oh, all right, is that all right? Should I be writing that? But please, please, please don't judge, don't question, just write what's in your mind. You might indeed want to start with where you are right now, but in terms of the theme of this evening, you might want to reflect back over this year. You might want to think about what's this been like for me? You might, as Caroline said, want to focus in on what do I need and what's going on for me now. And although the year will have had many challenges, maybe there'll have been some things in there that you're taking, which you will be taking into the next phase as we move on and beyond this year. So it's entirely up to you. We're not going to share anything that you write about at all. This is private. So could I offer you the invitation to write for yourself, just comfortably, sitting comfortably, and I'm going to give you just under 10 minutes for writing now, and I'm just going to time that. I'll tell you when we've got to just a little bit left, maybe a minute left. So this is your time for writing whatever you need to write right now.
So we've just got another two minutes, just a couple of minutes left. Okay, we've just be finishing off in the next minute or so. So just be concluding what you were writing. And just you might look back over it and then perhaps close it, close your book or put, put your writing away. That was absolutely an extraordinary experience from here, being with you all, all writing in your in your journals, all practicing your reflective writing in your journaling. There was the most extraordinary feeling and sense um, of you all working together in that way and I ho really hope you found it a, an interesting start maybe you do journal anyway but if not perhaps it's um, suggested to you the possibility one of the the wonderful things about it is that you can choose you you can go where you want to go and you can, if you don't want to explore certain things, you don't have to, you can close them down. You can explore what you want to. You can listen more to yourself. You can connect more with what's important to you. And that of course is something that is of such value. It's getting the thoughts from your head onto the page and then you can step back and look at them. You can look back if you journal over time and see how things have shifted. You can identify important themes for you or recognize really what you need. And coming at this from a place of kindness and valuing of your own experience is such a valuable thing. To do so I, I really hope you've um, enjoyed and been inspired by the prospect if you are going to continue journaling um, just choose what might work for you short chunks you don't have to do it every day um, I, I quite like the idea of some shorter sessions and then perhaps a bit of a longer session perhaps at the end of a week or once a fortnight just to look back but really you're the person who knows what you need so please take this as an invitation to explore your own thoughts and feelings through journaling just interestingly one final thought if we're writing about things that we feel really great about strong positive emotions we tend to feel well-being benefits immediately if we're exploring emotions that are harder will experience the benefits and the well-being longer term. But either way, it is beneficial. So thank you for joining me in that. And I'm going to hand you over now to Bettina. Yes, thank you so much, Eve. That um, really inspired me to pick up journaling again, which I haven't done in quite a while. Thank you. 
Yeah, hello everybody. I'm Bettina Falkenberg. I'm an EFT therapist and trainer, and I work privately, but also for the Breast Cancer Haven. And we thought it would be uh, nice to end this hour on me leading you through a round of EFT tapping, um, because that's very lovely for calming and distressing. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, EFT yet, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques and does exactly what it's Oh, am I frozen? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Um, EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques and is also known as tapping because we're tapping on um, the endpoints of energy meridians on the face and upper body. While we speak out loud about issues that we would like to, um, to address that bother us, negative emotions only. Um, so you can imagine that but EFT is a little bit like uh, a combination between elements of Western psychology, talking therapies, and old traditional Chinese medicinal knowledge brought together, a love child of both. So what happens when we tap is that actually we're sending messages to the stress center of the brain and tell the stress center of the brain to calm down. What happens is that lowers um, stress hormones in the blood, for example, um, if your blood pressure is too high, it might drop, heart rate um, is stabilized and more even, and all these things. So it has lots of beneficial physical effects as well, um, as well as leaving you feeling hopefully nice and calm and relaxed. Uh, sorry, I just need to ask Emma here, do I need to come out and come in again? Is, is it possible to follow me? Is it okay? Because it seems to me like I'm freezing um, a lot here. Okay, just let me know. Okay, um, where was I? Yeah, so before we get started, though, one thing I would like to say is we will be tap uh, tapping on the face. We will be touching the face. And as you all know by now, in Corona times, uh, we should only touch the face if we have just washed our hands. So if any of you feels it would be beneficial to go and take 30 seconds, you wash your hands now before I get started with the tapping round, then that's your opportunity. Yeah, someone is going. That's it's always better to be on the safe side. The other thing I would like to say is that we're literally tapping into the unconscious. We're communicating with what's below the surface. We want to bypass the very busy mind all the time. So what can possibly happen, it doesn't need to happen, but it could happen is that some emotions that are there and might've been you know, under wraps or might've been even stirred a little bit by the journaling that you've just done is possible. They could rise up and they could come out in you know, feeling emotional, being a bit tearful. That's perfectly fine. It's good to let emotions pass through. If that happens to you, just keep tapping and breathing. But the one thing I would like to say is that if any of you feels like it gets overwhelming, you really feel you have tears, then please unmute yourself and shout out because I don't want anyone to sit at home and feel emotional in a way that's not feeling like a release, doesn't feel good. It's unlikely to happen, but I just, for my own peace of mind, want you to be aware that if it gets emotional, let us know, okay? So, hands are washed, let's get started. And I hope you will all join me, and invite you all to join me. Just repeat what I do, um, tap where I tap and repeat what I say. So before we start with, with the tapping round, just take a deep breath in and out. Don't hold it, don't force it, just take a deep breath in and out. And then just sort of feel inside your body, notice how your throat is feeling. Sometimes when we have a little bit of anxiety, the throat gets tight. Or the chest might be feeling there's some pressure. Shoulders might get tense. Just notice what's going on in your body. And now again, Sitting here as you do, just take a deep breath, the deepest breath you can take 
right now. Don't hold it. Take it in and let it go again. And on a scale of zero to 10, when zero means you're not breathing at all, you're holding your breath. And 10 is you coming in after, a, you know, running after the bus or something. Where on this scale, zero to 10, was this breath you just took? Just notice that number for yourself. Okay, and here we, we start with the actual tapping round. We begin by tapping on the side of the hand. Either hand is fine, left or right, it's, it's mirrored. So please repeat after me. Even though this breath I just took was not my fullest breath yet, I accept myself. Even though this breath I just took is still a little bit restricted, I'm breathing and I appreciate it. Even though this breath I just took is not my fullest breath yet, I accept myself anyway. Okay. And now we're taking two fingers of the tapping hand. Either side is fine. And we begin by tapping what we call the round. First point is where the eyebrow meets the bridge of the nose. Just tap so that you can feel it, but don't give yourself bruises. This breath I just took. Second point in the corner of the eye, right where the little laughter wrinkles are. This breath I just took, under the eye, we're on the bony bit. It's not my fullest breath yet. Under the nose, but I'm breathing. Next point is under the lip in the chin crease. This breath I just took, it's still a little bit restricted. Next point is just where the collarbone ends underneath there. This breath I just took. My body knows how to breathe. The next point is under the arm where the brass strap is. If that's uncomfortable for anyone, leave it out. It's not important. My body does know how to breathe. Top of the head, right on the crown. My body breathes even in the middle of the night. When I'm asleep, nothing I need to do. Going back to the first point. And I notice how the air is streaming in through my nostrils. Blowing up my tummy. And I notice how my chest expands as I breathe in all directions. Even between my shoulder blades. My body knows how to breathe. All I need to do is allow my body to breathe. And perhaps I can allow my shoulders to drop just a tiny little bit. Breathing in all this nourishing and energizing oxygen.
my blood it transports this oxygen to every single cell of my body. With every beat of my heart. Even when I'm asleep at night. Allowing my body to breathe. Freely and effortlessly. Okay, let's just take it till here. And now take again, just as you did before the tapping round, just one deep breath in and out. Let it go again, nothing to force, nothing to hold. And just compare that. There's no right or wrong answer, just notice whether it's a little bit deeper than it was before. Sometimes people say it's not deeper, but it feels like it was easier. My chest was a little bit more open or my throat was a little bit less tense or tight. So just notice that. And if you feel not much has changed so far, then we could go on, keep on tapping, but we don't have the time tonight. So I just wanted to introduce you to this little, that's a little tapping routine that's really, really good for um, regular use. Um, I mean, you saw that took five minutes um, to do in the morning after getting up, to do before you going to bed at night, because it constantly, every time you do it, it relaxes your body, it lowers your stress hormones. It is beneficial for your blood pressure, all of these things. And quite apart from using tapping, little tapping sequences like this regular for your well-being as self-care, you can, of course, use tapping as well. And some of you know this, I recognize some faces. Uh, in moments when you do feel an, an overwhelming negative emotion, maybe, you know, you have to go for a scan or you are angry at the other half or whatever is happening for you in the moment, you can tap on this feeling and it will pass through gently and safely. So um, if anyone has any questions or wants to know more, I'm very happy to, you can contact me via the Breast Cancer Haven and I can let you have some more information on how you can tap yourself. Thank you very much. And um, back to Emma. Thank 